you don't look like you want to be a model today. No, she wants to go out and play. Hey everyone, welcome to Garden Fork. Today, power tool repair. They thought they were going to the library, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're over 40, things happen to your eyes. Let me show you what we're doing today. You've got your power tool and you're cutting along and then you suddenly, your cord gets stuck under the blade and you cut it in half. As if it's the cord's fault. I've done this three times with this saw. <laughs> so when you're cutting, is it? it's Eric's saw. Here. Yes. <laughs> All right, let me show you how to do this. The first thing you could do is you could order a new power cord on the internet. Go to the manufacturer and order a new cord. But you could also do it the Eric way. All right, come on. Are the electricians gonna be breaking in? Yeah, we're gonna get hate mail. Not hate mail, but I'll Great just call mail. it excited mail, excited okay? Excited mail. <laughs> All right, you need a couple things. A heat gun. Heat gun. Shrink tubing. Does everyone have shrink tubing? Well, they're going to. If you have a shop, a workshop, you should have a heat gun and shrink tubing, okay? Okay. Very good wire cutter electrical pliers. Don't cheap out on these, okay? This is a soldering tip with electronic solder. Plug this in and warm it up. And good quality electrical tape. Don't cheap out on your electrical tape. This is a commercial grade electrical tape, okay? Plug in your soldering iron and let this warm up. This one has a little light in it, so you know that it's plugged in and heating up, so you don't have to go, oh, like this, which I've done before, right there. <laughs> Put that down. Put that down somewhere where it won't set everything on fire. Take your power cord, and we want to strip off the heavy insulation, so we're going to cut on both sides of the insulation. A sharp blade works best for this. When you're using a blade like this, always cut away from yourself. Cut away. Don't cut toward yourself because you can cut your hands. Pull the wires out. And there's black wire and white wire. In there. Right. There's a common and the hot is what it's called. What's, which is which? The common is the white wire. The hot is the black wire. So again, buy quality tools. If you buy a cheap wire cutter, it's not going to work, first of all. And then every time it breaks, you're going to buy a new one. So it's actually costing you more money. So good quality tools save you money in the long run. You see how easy it is with a quality tool? At least you're gonna have garden fork wire cutters. We twist these wires up like this. Why? Uh, it makes it easier to splice the wire and solder it. Now we're gonna be using shrink tubing to, to finalize this repair. So at this point, put the shrink tubing on like that and move it away far, away, far away from where we're going to be doing the soldering, okay? Don't forget to do this. Don't be an Eric and forget to put the shrink tubing on and then solder the whole thing together. So someone's done that before. Now we're going to take the black wire from each side of the repair and you've got your shrink tubing on here, right? Far away. The black wire and we take and cross them and then twist each end over itself like that that is called a splice oh so black goes to black black goes to black and you're just twisting it together right then we take our soldering tip here soldering tip electronic solder let this heat up first put the uh, soldering tip under the splice and we're going to let that heat up the copper wire and there's kind of a point where all of a sudden you know it's hot enough to apply the solder to it and that has not happened yet i can tell you right now it starts to maybe smoke a little bit, and that's okay. You can test it by just touching it here. Oh, see, it's going a little bit. Okay, to see how it flows in just like that? That is the perfect temperature for solder. Look how it just goes in like that. And you remove the tip, and now you've soldered a splice. That's all you have to do. It's really quite simple. You just, you take heat, you apply it to the copper wires, and when it gets warm enough, you touch it with the solder, and the solder is drawn into the wires. It's really, really cool. But again, don't touch this, it's really hot. Yeah. Now we're gonna take our commercial grade electrical tape. This is the Eric way to repair it. This not, might not be the UL rated way to do it. This is how I do it. Um, I'm not an expert, I'm not an electrician, but I just wanna show you how Eric fixes power cords, okay? In the privacy of your own home. In the privacy of your own home, this is how I fix power cords. 
you take your electrical tape, you lay it across that splice, that soldered splice, and we wrap it around. We've got the two black wires soldered now. We're gonna take the two white wires and connect them. This is a little harder because the joint is already soldered over there. We apply heat here, being careful not to get it on the electrical tape. So we're just laying the solder on and it's melting right in. It's kind of like turning into liquid. Liquid metal. metal. That's what it is. And now we take the whole joint and we wrap this. Can you overwrap it? Is there such a thing? You can, I think, overwrap it. The big thing is a lot of people, when they break a cord, they just take and splice it together and they wrap the heck out of it with this. And what I do is I use a high quality electrical tape for the inner splices and then I use shrink tubing over the whole thing. So this is the piece of shrink tubing that we slid on before we did our solders. I remember that. And this is going to push, we're gonna push this down and over that whole thing. So notice, you don't want too much electrical tape here because it'll bung up on this, but you want enough that that is uh, electrically insulated. And then you center that in there like that. So there's ample room on both sides to go back to the original insulation. Remember when you're done with this, unplug it and put it in a safe place where you're not it's not gonna burn anything and you're not gonna get burned by it because this is hot, okay? Wait, you didn't do it. Do what? Unplug it. Dude. Okay. I wanted to move on to the next step, which is very exciting. <laughs> you're so excited about the next step. This is a heat gun. You can use this for all sorts of things around your house. Turn this on and watch what happens here. The battery just died in the middle of that, the camera battery, but here we go. So this shrinks and grabs the insulation of the power cord and makes this really nice and neat. How do you know when you're done with the shrinkage? It wraps it kind of like plastic wrap, you know? So there you go. You know it's done when it grabs that really nicely and it grabs both ends of the power cord really nicely. Okay. That's great. So now you can use your saw again. Let's see. Okay, the moment of truth. Now we'll plug this in, make sure it works. So you've put the, connected the two black wires together, you've soldered them, wrapped them with tape. You've taken the two white wires together, soldered them, wrapped them with tape, and then you put the shrink tubing all over that whole thing and shrunk that with the heat gun. And now, the moment of truth. Ready? I am. There you go. You just save yourself some time and money by watching Garden Fork. <laughs> so again, that's how I do the repair. I mean, the experts or lawyers or someone might say that's not how to do it, but use really good quality electrical tape Heat gun, solder. You could also learn how to solder that way. Get some good skills. Use the shrink tubing and you're golden. And then your saw is back to doing what it's supposed to do instead of sitting here gathering dust on your to-do list, right? Right. So come to our site, all sorts of cool stuff. Till the next time you cut the wire. Yeah, till the next time I cut a wire and a power cord. <laughs> Thank you. We got a lot of more videos on our site. They're not all on iTunes or YouTube. Uh, plus there's all sorts of discussions, cool pictures, pictures of the dogs, if you like that. I like that. And sign up for our email list. All right? All right. Thanks. Make it a great day. I'll see you later. See ya. Oh, Garden Fork Radio. Oh, yeah. And listen to, uh, we have a new audio show, Garden Fork Radio, that you can also listen to on our site and on iTunes. Okay?